Hey babes, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tonight is the Cancer full moon and this moon feels really, really special because this year, 2018, has been the most challenging, the most amazing years. Like I keep saying the highs of the highs, the lows of the lows and this is the last full moon of the year before we are starting in starting to move into the new year and what's going to happen in the new year and i know this because i pull the charts but what's going to happen in the new year is we're going to have a string of eclipses that are going to light things off and light things up and you know 2018 was really about causing enough friction in order for us to create change in our lives in order for us to prepare for this transition that we're in right now in 2019 is when those things start to seed and we'll talk about that later on on the youtube um you know later on on the youtube channel as we move forward into the to the new year but what i wanted to do was to just come out and sit for a minute and to reflect i'll show you where i'm at actually i'm gonna show you where i'm at right now in the french quarter but do you hear how quiet it is and so peaceful? This is my new home. I've been so much in love with it. You can't see right now because it's overcast, but the full moon would normally be reflected in that window right there, which I can see from this hammock. But I wanted to come out and again, just kind of sit for a second and reflect on this year and pull some cards, and then also share that message with you guys. So what I wanted to do was to include you guys in a little piece of my ritual, which is to pull cards and to shuffle and to sit with my intuition and see what comes up. And I feel like I need a message just to, and I don't know what I'm going to ask yet. I'm gonna sit with it before I ask the question for me and for all of us but I do feel like there's a message that needs to be received before we move forward. And that's gonna be my intent tonight is to shuffle the cards and see what comes up and share that. So of course I wanted to invite you guys to, to pick a card and see what and how it applies to you. All right, so that being said, I'm gonna go inside, I'm gonna grab my cards, I'm gonna sit on my bed and we're gonna get started. All right, my love, so we are currently hanging out in my room on my bed. Over here are some of the cards that I'm gravitating towards tonight. The African American Tarot, you guys have seen me mention this multiple times. I've completely fallen in love with it, so I have to work with it tonight and every day. Every night I've been working with it. And the Healing with the Angels Oracle cards, I think by Doreen Virtue. And messages from your animal spirit guides is on the very bottom. I don't know if you can see that. I do have... Uh, the Rider weight that I always work with when I'm pulling messages. I'm using my larger one, not my smaller one, although I keep my smaller one with me all the time. This is the major, like this is what the deck look what the deck looks like, but I did before I started filming just now, I did um, sit and meditate for a minute and connect with my intuition and my guides in order to see what messages I was able to pull for you guys. So this is not the complete deck because the cards that I pulled are sitting off on the side. But that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video or I'm going to go ahead and pause it and set it up. Meanwhile, I want to allow you guys the chance to kind of sit and meditate and you know call in your guides and ask them to help direct you as far as what message you need to hear and of course I'm setting the intention that the messages that I share tonight that if you're hearing them no matter if it's on the night of the full moon or later on in time that it reaches you at the perfect moment at the perfect time that is divine for you to hear it that being said feel free to go ahead and pause this video i'm going to break the cards down into four different sections and then i'll let you see you can follow your intuition and then we'll take it from there so baby loves this is the first set right here that's number one here's number two here's number three and here's number four now go ahead and take a moment at least to kind of sit with it and see how it makes you feel. And which one of these cards are you gravitating towards the most? And then also realize that the message that you're going to receive is going to be for your highest and greatest good. That it guides you and provide insight and clarity into what you need to hear as we end 2018. Okay, so for the first group, 
we have the Two of Swords, the Six of Pentacles, the Wolverine, which says you're a lot tougher than you think you are. Healing is self-acceptance. And then the Four of Cups from the African American Tarot. Now the first thing that I feel with this is wild because I see it as someone who's giving, 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 putting out and exerting a lot of energy at least throughout 2018. And this could be in relationships, career, whatever. The crazy thing is, is that the Two of Swords stands out to me, but I don't see that as present moment. I see this as advice and guidance as you're closing out 2018. I feel like this is almost where you have been forced and pushed to be. And I don't see this as being something that feels good in the moment. I feel like this is actually something that might be a little bit misunderstood to the point where it almost seems like, you know, if, if 2018, if you put all this energy and effort into being at this one moment in your life, you know, in December or whatever, whatever time it is that you're watching this video. But if you put all this energy to be, to, to, to accomplish something, to do something, and now you're at this stalemate, how uncomfortable does it feel to sit there and, and to, and to be still? It almost feels like all of this and it pays off into what? But that's the energy that I feel behind this. And that's the guidance that I see that the cards, the angels and the guides and the cards are suggesting to you now is just to be still. Moving forward into 2019, what I'm seeing by looking at the Six of Pentacles is being in a spot where you're almost, you're being far more selective about who and what you're giving the best of yourself to. And what I'm also seeing is that it almost seems like sometimes people or you can say yes to something or accept something or give the most of yourself, the best of yourself to something because it almost seems like you're settling or you think that that's as good as it can get. And this is why the universe and the cards are really suggesting right now that you be still and if you do give any aspect of yourself, that it almost be measured and not calculated, but making sure that you're not exhausting yourself and um, depleting yourself, especially as you move into 2019. And what you'll realize is that when you give so much of yourself, when you're feeling empty and you're feeling broken or worn down, it's not, you're not doing anybody any favors. And I feel like you might have heard this and this might resonate with you, but you need to hear the reminder now. When you give so much of yourself and put in all this energy and effort and you don't receive what you rightfully deserve or what you are expecting, it's, it's depleting. So when we see the Four of Cups, the energy of Four and the, the energy of the Two of Swords, this is again, being really like, not stagnant, but kind of cutting things off for just a moment. And then before, before you decide to give any more of yourself. And I think that that's really interesting too, that self-acceptance from the, um, the healing oracles was the card that decided to reveal itself because this is, you know, loving yourself and choosing in every action that you do, making sure that your decisions, the words that you say, the people that are around you, the things that you say yes to, that they are actually supporting of your energy and vibe with you versus you, you know, being in a position where you're almost less than, you know what I mean? Like this, the, when you see the Six of Pentacles, sometimes it concerns me because I wonder, are you these two beggar people or are you this person here? This person here is saying, you know what, I have all of these resources, but I'm going to look at, you know, what I have accumulated and I, I'm going to look at and measure what it is that I give because I don't have to do any more than what I'm putting in currently. And that's a tough, if you're in this position here, you're accepting whatever it is that this person is giving you, but is that truly enough? And if it isn't enough, what do you, what do you allowing to come to play? What are you allowing to come to pass by, you know, you accepting that? 
because in reality you have the option to choose it or like to say yes to this or not but either way, if this is truly you and you're the one who's kind of giving, then at the same time, it's like you, with the with the four of cups and the two of swords, it really is like, let me just measure. Let me stop for a second. Let me look at this before I give any more of myself as I end 2018 and move into 2019. And I just want to make sure that what I'm giving and who I'm giving it to, like I'm not less than, I'm not weak. I do deserve more and I think that that's why the Wolverine is even here too because it says you're a lot tougher than you think you are. You're not, maybe you're not giving yourself enough credit. Maybe you're accepting less than what it is that you deserve but again that's coming from a thing of you know it's self acceptance and self love. The reality is is that I am worthy and I don't have to accept anything less than what it is that you know you know that than I desire. That's the truth and maybe that means again you may have put so much energy and effort into a relationship or into a career or your dream and then all of a sudden, you know, 2018, the full moon or whatever it is, is kind of revealing itself to you now and you're just like, this is it? And if, when you ask yourself if this is it, is it enough to fulfill you? Is it enough to fill you? And if not, you don't have to say yes to it. In fact, it's like, look, it's almost like you kind of spill it over, you know what I mean? I'm not happy with this. I'm not satisfied with this. In the African American tarot, the message behind this card is a little bit more positive um, and easy to digest than it is in the Rider Waite. But in the Rider Waite, this is I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't need to say yes to this. In fact, what it is that you're offering to me, I don't even. You know, it doesn't even interest me. That's not what I want. So moving forward in 20 from you know closing 2018 and moving into 2019. This is again being way more selective and demanding, asserting, calling in what you truly want for yourself versus you accepting less than, you know, like crumbs. You can't survive off of crumbs, my dear. And you know that. All right, lovies, for my number twos, we have the Ten of Pentacles, the Four of Wands, okay, <laughs> the Chameleon, which says, stay in the background and adjust to the situation rather than being conspicuous and attempting to direct the course of events. We have Miracles, wow, and then we have Ten of Swords. This is insane. This is really, really good. Okay, so the first thing that I'm seeing is so interesting too because at the time of me filming this, it's the full moon in the sign of Cancer, and Cancer is all about creating structure, stability, and family, and safety, and security for yourself. And again, I don't know if this is connected to you and your career, your love life, your family, your well-being, but it's no... It's so interesting to me to see that whatever it is, is like an investment. Whatever it is that we're focusing on, it's an investment for your future, long-term longevity. Currently, at the time of me filming this, Pluto is moving through the sign of Capricorn. Saturn is moving through the sign of Capricorn. And the full moon is in the sign of Cancer, which is opposite Capricorn. Capricorn is all about long-term longevity, building for the long haul and generations. And that's what the Ten of Pentacles represents is connections to generations, meaning like the generation that you've come from, family, your roots, your upbringing, and the security that that can bring and what that looks like for you, whether it be good or bad, or something that feels good to you or something that feels negative or detrimental to you, but then also what it is that you're building, the legacy that it is that you're building. And what I'm seeing right now is totally setting intention and thinking about your future for not just right now but for what's to come and the seeds have already been planted and what i'm also seeing with this with the ten of swords is from the african-american tarot is removing out of your life and saying no and really it almost seems like the areas that you've hit rock bottom on or the areas that are not working or the things that you've said goodbye to whether it be a relationship or a career or whatever, but Ten of Swords is showing that the the worst that has happened is now it's now past. It's now coming to you know a completion, and we're saying goodbye to that cycle for very good reason because the 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 cards, the angels, the guides are thinking about your future, your stability, your stability, your ability to be supported, your ability to be. Um, loved and accepted for who you are and the gifts that you bring and again that that 
that that be something that is not just temporary, but something that's lasting. And I see this as, you know, if there was a breakup or if there's a breakdown that, or if there was a cancellation or a firing, maybe you, something in your life has been, is getting wiped out and getting cleansed. But really what's happening is, is that this is the worst. The worst that could happen has happened but it happens for a very, very good reason. Because again, whatever it is, it didn't serve its purpose. Well, it served its purpose, but it wasn't meant to stay there forever. And that's what these cards always, with the Ten of Pentacles and the Four of Wands together, they want forever. They don't want you to move in a space of lack or suffering or being left out in the cold. The Ten of Pentacles is all about security and you being provided for. And the Four of Wands is that feeling of being provided for and that feeling of being accepted and loved and celebrated. So whatever it is that you're walking out of, whatever it is that's being wiped out of, say, wiped out of your life, say goodbye to it. Because again, the night that I'm filming this is the Cancer full moon and Cancer wants you to be happy. It thinks about your family, it thinks about your heart, it thinks about your children, your legacy, your ability to be at home and to be comfortable and in your own skin, and that's what it is that we're seeing here. That's what the, the cards are suggesting, is that we're not talking about benefits for temporary. What was released and what is being released was temporary, but what, right now what we're thinking about is longevity and lasting and loving and supportive and, you know, coming home and having a you know food on the table like a and family around you and a good book to read or whatever your perfect the epitome of perfect happiness looks like for you is what the cards are suggesting here but with 2018 we're saying goodbye and it really is you really examining and looking at and giving to the universe and giving to the divine like this is what I don't want anymore this is what I really truly want for you to remove from my life and the words that came through are anxiety with this intention, depression, feelings of loneliness or isolation, that needs to be completely removed and wiped out. And I'm wondering if this is why that's coming through is because swords is always connected to mental well-being and how we think and how we communicate and how we express ourselves, whether it be, you know, something that's constructive or destructive. But I, I really am saying, seeing like, you know, we're anything that feels like a burden or is putting tension and stress on your heart and in your mind and in your spirit, this is the thing to call out and to let go. And the wild thing is, is that the, the, the card that jumped from the angels, like healing with the angels is miracles. And then to support that is the chameleon. Now, this says, when it says stay in the background and adapt to the situation rather than being conspicuous and attempting attempting to direct things, the course of events, and this card suggests that this is about miracles, this is because what's happening here, this transition that's happening within your life, is something that the angels, your guides, needs to have full jurisdiction. They need to have full control over the situation because what is happening here is the connections to the right people, being supported by the right people, feeling good with in yourself and some of those things need to come from miraculous intervention so instead of you pushing and forcing your will it's almost it almost seems like you're accepting defeat but you're not you're not accepting defeat by laying your swords down and laying your burden down for your angels your guides to kind of step in and work the course of miracles. So instead of you forcing your will, this is you just celebrating who you are and what you've done and what you wish your life to look like. Again, this is not for right now. This is for years, generations to come. These two cards are, especially this card is connected to legacy and support and feeling supported. Look at these people here. They're waiting for you. They're waiting to say hello to you. They're waiting to celebrate you. So. What we're going to do is we're going to let go and we're not going to fight, we're not going to force, we're going to be more open and call in, set the intention, pray for your guides, your ancestors, your angels, archangels to come in and to work the miracle on your behalf because what we want is not temporary satisfaction, we want lasting, forever, commitment that is easy and effortless and creates structure and bones for for your future and for what's to come. This is a really beautiful um, card combination. Then the last thing too is the Ten of Swords is nothing to be afraid of because this is like saying like, 
you know, I not that you're defeated, but you relinquish it. You relinquish your need to push anymore. And that actually is sometimes such a relief because that means that you don't have to do anything more than you've already done. Just invite your angels and your guides in and your ancestors in order to, you know, invite them in to kind of do what it is that they need to do in order to create miracles in your life. And when you see this combination, you know it's coming. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off really short. I hope that makes sense for my number twos. And we're going to move on to my number threes. All right, so my number threes, let's go ahead and move on with your cards. And we have the world. We have the queen of pentacles. We have the grouse. And it says express yourself through rhythm and movement by drumming and dancing, which I'll be doing tomorrow. <laughs> and balance. Oh, wow. Okay, perfect. And then the full card from the African American Tarot. Okay, first and foremost, this is so interesting to me because I see this, oh my God, I see this as almost celebratory, even though it doesn't really truly seem like, you know, these cards are suggesting it. That's my intuition. That's what my vibe is getting. Now, in 2018, I see hard work, energy, effort put in, but, and you know, and that's all well and good because all of that is you know, all culminating and all bringing us to this one moment, this where we're at right now. Um, and that's something that I see with the world card always is that you've gone through the lessons, you've gone through the trials, you've gone through the tribulations, you've obviously been, you know, putting the pedal to the metal and grinding and focused and determined and loyal, committed to your 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 goal what is that you're focusing on what is that you're trying to set intention for a lot of times with the queen of with the pentacles in general it's material it's manifestation so this could be work this could be money this could be career but it doesn't have to be exclusively that it's like the things that it is that we've have committed ourselves to that we're devoted to that we want to see materialize that we want to see um manifest in tangible form we want to be able to touch it so it's interesting that we have the end and then we have the beginning. We have the end from the Rider weight, and then we have the very beginning, the start, the seed of the Fool card from the African American Tarot, and the balance of those two things, and the messages of those two things. And it's interesting too, because the Queen of Pentacles is very sensual. That's something that a lot of people don't realize and that they don't talk about with the Queen of Pentacles, or they don't learn about the Queen of Pentacles, is how sensual she is, and how much she's you know, as grounded as she is, even as a Virgo with Earth energy here, because she's connected to Virgo, um, Taurus, and Capricorn. But when when we look at her, we don't see her as a sensual being. We don't, sometimes people look at the Pentacles energy as a stick in the mud. But in reality, in in their best version of themselves, they enjoy the finer things of life. They enjoy pleasure. They enjoy love. They enjoy touch. They enjoy sensuality. This is a very sensual card and people don't realize that about the pentacles and the fact that the this card the grouse comes through and says express yourself through rhythm and movement by drumming and dancing that's the balance of the hard work the lessons that you've learned and the celebration as you move into this new beginning this new step in your life and not everything is hard work all the time the queen of pentacles is known for her hard work she's known for her effort She's known for, you know, rolling her sleeves up and getting in, in the dirt and doing whatever it is that is needed in order to get the job done. But there's two sides to it. There's the hardworking side and there's a side where you reap the reward, you reap, you reap the benefit. I see, you know, with the world card, the work, the effort has been put in. But also with the fool card, I'm seeing the start of the, the, the ability to receive, the ability to celebrate, the ability to enjoy to actually bite into the fruit of what you have, you know, been laboring over. And that's why we're celebrating. And what happens is that when you step into a space of faith and stepping forward into this is what I accept, this is what I receive, this is what I'm calling in, you're going to, the universe responds to that and gives to you because that is the balance. It's not all hard work all the time. And if it is all hard work for you, that's all you're going to get is the hard work. You're never going to get the reward. So it's very important for you to step into a space where you are celebrating. And even if it doesn't seem like there's much to celebrate, there is. When you get into physical goddess energy, sensual goddess energy of touch and dance and movement and rhythm, you're speaking with the, the rawness, the realness of 
you know, this tr not tribal, but authentic, unrestrained, wild aspect within yourself. And that is like almost like Kundalini energy getting released and opening up. And with that, you get the reward, you get the benefit of it. And that signals to the universe that she's ready or that this person is ready. So there's two sides to it. There's the work and there's the reward. There's the end. All of what you have done, all of what you have learned in 2018, all of what has happened has served its purpose. And it all comes to this moment where you now step forward into your future. And the balance that comes from this is actually receiving you know, reaping the reward, getting the fruit of those labors and to celebrate it by being open to connecting with your sensual self and that on the full moon and maybe moving forward into 2019, maybe that's be, maybe that be something that you incorporate more into your ritual. I'm seeing this in my life where I've been going to, you know, drum circles every Sunday and it really like just drumming has really helped me to examine myself in in ways that are mental i realize how much i think things i realize how much i try to process things and it's it's not always you know hard work it's not always a mental thing it's not always things that we understand it's things that we feel and that's the balance of those aspects it's the balance of intuition and 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 logic like the two the two worlds I hope that that makes sense, but this makes a lot of sense for me in my life because I've been doing a lot of drumming and dancing at the at the um, drumming circles and how much, you know, it really works to activate and to connect with this like primal energy within you, this primal knowledge um, as you move forward into 2019 and connecting with that in order for you to, you know, reap the reward of everything that it is that you've put in, the effort that you've put in, the intentions that you've set for 2018 or whenever it is that you're watching this video. All right, so I hope that, that makes sense. Um, that was for my number threes, and we're gonna move on to our number fours. All right, so my number fours, you're the last of the group, but oh my gosh, last but not least, the Ace of Cups, my goodness, and the Tower card. Then we have the Dog, oh no. Your loyalty and faithfulness is misplaced by, <laughs> by serving too many masters. The Intention card. Wow, and the Eight of Swords, that's incredible. So I'm gonna put these two together, the Eight of Swords and the Dog, because I um, I just feel like they should be together, and I feel like intention should be with the Ace of Cups. So this goes without saying that there is obviously a lot of emotion <laughs> that is getting brought to the surface here, and this could be feelings that have been lying dormant. This could be feelings that have been you know, maybe you've been holding back or things that feelings that you've been feeling, but maybe it hasn't been safe for you to express them. Or maybe this is new emotional opportunities coming into your life. And the reason why I say maybe is because it's different for everyone and I want to cover everybody because these card readings are for a general audience and I, I, I can't see your astrology um, chart and this isn't a one-on-one -on -one reading. It's very much open to the group that picks number four. So with the Ace of Cups, though, it's always the door opening. And with the Tower card, I see this as everything bubbling up and coming up to the surface. And this is like feelings that you didn't realize that you've been feeling or things that you need to say, um, things that you need to examine. But I see this as as we're entering 2018, it almost seems like things have kind of been swirling and building up, whether it be in love or whether it be in your personal life or your healing or whatever. But it almost seems like things have been kind of, you know, set into place. And now during the full moon or now at this time of you watching this video, these feelings are starting to spontaneously reveal themselves and show themselves. And this could, the Ace of Cups, although a lot of people look at it and they say, oh, this is going to be so positive. This is, I'm going to hear someone tell me that they love me or I'm going to tell someone that I love them. And maybe that is the case. But at the same time, these could be feelings again that this card symbolizes emotions. So this could be any type of emotion. This could be anger. This could be sadness. This could be... Um, excitement, joy, love, pleasure, but either way, it's bubbling up, it's coming up to the surface. And it's funny to me because when I see the dog and when I see the Eight of Swords, the Eight of Swords is, you know, our our worst case, our worst fears, the things that we don't think are going to happen, or the things that when we start to see them happen, we start to panic. And this card always shows up when things might be a little bit, we're perceiving things to be a little bit worse than what they actually are. Now, it's I also 
when I'm looking at these cards, I see the Ace of Cups and I see a connection to love and matters of the heart and relationships and true love and soulmates. And what I'm seeing here is if you're, um, you know, if you're single and if you're looking for love or you've been in a relationship with someone or you've had your eye on someone, I almost see this as, and if you've been waiting, this is when you start to hear and start to see you know, what it is that they truly are loyal to and who it is that they're loyal to and how you fit into that, into that greater picture. And then I also see you, you know, examining what it is that you want instead of, I don't see this as, um, you know, you having to choose, you know, I'm either loyal to my relationship or I'm loyal to my career. I see this as what is it that I am leashing myself to what is it that I'm attaching myself to within one area of your life whether it be a relationship or whether it be aspects within your career or aspects within your healing and your feelings your gut intuition your heart is bubbling up and telling you the truth of what it is that you truly want for yourself no matter how impossible it seems no matter how scary it may seem the reality is is that your heart and your intuition is speaking very clearly to you as far as what you want what you deserve and what you need to set the intention for and allow it to come into your life and this requires you to commit to it this requires you to be loyal to it this requires other people to be loyal to you and to give their heart to you instead of maybe sprinkling their attention and sprinkling their energy other places this is where you set the intention that they are going to come to you and they're going to give you their heart they're going to give you what it, what it is that you've been waiting to hear and if it's not one person maybe that's not the person the right person for you to be loyal to maybe that's not the right career for you to be loyal to maybe there's something new on the horizon something unexpected it may bring out fear in you in order to let go of what it is that you normally you know, may have had your eyes on or what what it is that you normally may have been faithful to, but now it's time for you to step out and find something and find someone that chooses you and loves you just as much as you would choose and love them. And this is, you'll know because they pour their heart out. You know, you'll know because they're ready. You'll know because you don't have to force it. You shouldn't have to fight for someone or something to tell you how much they appreciate you, whether it be a job, whether it be a relationship or whether it be anything. And you'll know because it'll be easy for them to tell you that they care about you. They're not, you know, holding themselves back and fear anything. And if it truly is the right person and they are moving from a space of fear, set the intention that they have, you know, that the commitment to you and the ability to start this life with you and to invest in you is going to be so worth it that the fear and the tension is completely released. But either way, just like it was for my number ones, don't force the situation. Be set the intention, set the miracle. But as you move forward, don't drag anyone with you if they don't want to be if they don't want to be loyal to you, if they don't want to be faithful. You do deserve true love. You do des deserve to pour your heart out and to give your heart to someone and to have them hold it safely, um, versus them sprinkling it around or them, you know, um, not giving you, you know, what what you want ultimately and the good thing always with the tower card is that you're open up to so much anything can happen especially as we're saying goodbye to the old and saying hello to the new anything can happen this is surprises this is i didn't see that coming and maybe i felt it but i didn't i didn't see that it was going to come in this way so i can't tell if this is new love that's coming in for you um and it totally depends on you it, you know better than i do right now because this reading is you know pretty much general but what are you setting intention for? Is it for new love? Is it for outpouring of old love? But make sure that whatever it is, is equally as faithful to you and loyal to you as you are to it. All right, my love. So I hope that makes sense. All right, so we're ending this video with perfect timing because my battery is about to end and I'm gonna move on to the rest of my ritual for the full moon. Wherever it is that you, wherever it is that you are right now, whatever it is that you're doing, I honestly hope that that message uh, reached you with love and light and with perfect timing and make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and you have your notifications turned on because there's plenty more videos where this came from especially as we're starting 2019. I love you with all of my heart. I hope you're well and I'll see you soon. Bye.